Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have x squared plus x squared divided by x plus 1 squared equals 5 over 4. And we're going to be solving for x values. All x values, real and complex. Great. So let's go ahead and get with the solution. I think I made similar problems before if I can find them. Um, I'm going to try to find the link. Sometimes you guys are better at finding those. Uh, and if you do find it, please share the link. Anyways, we have this equation and obviously we're going to go with two methods. The first method is going to be a little bit more painful and probably incomplete. Okay, so when you see a problem like this, brute force tells us that you should just expand everything, right? So if you do that, x squared plus x squared over x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 5 over 4. And if you make a common denominator or just multiply both sides by x squared plus x, 2x plus 1, then you're going to get the following. x squared times x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus x squared equals 5 over 4 times x squared plus 2x plus 1. Great. Let's go ahead and distribute everything. We get x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus x squared plus x squared. That's going to give me 2x squared. And on the right hand side, I'm getting 5 over 4x squared plus 5 over uh, 10 over 4, which is 5 halves of x plus 5 fourths. And then obviously you can multiply everything by 4, which is going to make things a little easier. I don't really want to, you know, uh, multiply or make a common denominator here. So let's just multiply everything by force to get rid of the fractions. And yes, Desmos does that sometimes. I have no, I mean, well, what's it called? Yes, uh, this is um, notability, yes. Notability does this weird thing sometimes. I have no idea why it's happening. Anyways, so this is the equation we're getting and then put everything on the same. So you see how nice it is without fractions, obviously. And then we're gonna put this here and here. And this is a cortic which is something that you don't want to solve with the quartic method because the quartic method is crazy, <laughs> super duper complicated. You don't want to know that. You can look it up and I believe there's a picture of the formula on Wikipedia and it's huge. It's just huge. And imagine if the quintic formula existed, it would be unbelievable. It would probably be, f you, you would probably need a book to fit it. Like every page would be a piece of it. Anyways, but it doesn't exist, so we don't have to worry about it. So anyways, this is a cortic, and obviously there's a, you know, a few different ways to solve it. You can try to write this as the product of two quadratics, like 2x squared plus ax plus b, and then 2x squared going off of 4x to the fourth, of course. This doesn't have to be like that, by the way. And of course, b times d is negative 10. So you can also try different combinations like 5 and negative 2, 10 and negative 1, so on and so forth. And of course, you, instead of 2x squared and 2x squared, you could have 4x squared and x squared. We don't know. There's a lot of unknowns, you know, lots of uncertainty. And, um, you know, that's why this is pretty complicated. You can also look for rational solutions if there's any. Look at uh, the factors of negative 10. Uh, possibilities, all possibilities divided by all factors of 4, and then you can use the rational root theorem. But overall, it's going to be very time consuming. That's why this problem has been contrived and it probably appeared on a math competition. I can't remember when and what, but if you do, please let me know. If you know of any links, uh, you know, uh, feel free to share. Anyways, so. Let's get back to the original problem and proceed with the second method. And if there's any third method, uh, please let us know. Okay, so second method, let's go back to the original. We have x squared plus x squared over x plus 1 squared equals 5 fourths. Okay, I can think of, I believe, a second method. By the way, I messed up. It's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be x squared and x plus 1 squared are separate, so like this. Okay, here we go. So in other words, I can basically write this as x squared plus x over x plus 1 squared, right? It goes 5 fourths. Great. Now from here, I can do the following. We can replace this with something else like y, and that gives us x squared plus y squared is equal to 5 over 4. 
This doesn't look very helpful because I increased the number of variables, but at the same time, I have two equations. So that's fair, right? So now from the second equation, I do need to do a little bit of work. Let's do it. If you cross multiply, you get x equals xy plus y, and then putting the x and y together like x minus y equals xy. And let me go ahead and write this along with that, and we got ourselves a nice system. Now to be able to solve the system, I can basically use x minus y and xy as variables. If I write this as x minus y squared plus 2xy equals 5 fourths, and then x minus y equals xy. So we can use substitution. Let's go ahead and call this something. How about k? So we get the following. If you substitute that into the first equation, you get k squared plus 2k is equal to 5 fourths. And if you add 1 to both sides, you get k squared plus 2k plus 1 is equal to 9 fourths. Notice that the left-hand side is a perfect square. And now you can use completing the square method and square root both sides. You're going to get two solutions. This should be easy, right? If you're doing algebra or if you've done it. This is going to be plus minus 3 halves. And from here, k is going to be negative 1 plus minus 3 halves. Giving us k equals negative 1 plus 3 halves, which is 1 half. And k equals negative 1 minus 3 halves, which is negative 5 halves. Those are the k values, but what is k, right? Let's go back. k is x minus y or xy. In other words, the k value is going to generate a quadratic equation because it's going to give us two equations. So in other words, if k is 1 half, we're going to get x minus y is 1 half and x, y is 1 half. From here, you get a quadratic. From here, you get another quadratic. By solving these quadratics, you're going to get the solution for x and y. But of course, you're only interested in x because y is just a dummy variable. <laughs> okay, so from here, you're going to be able to find it. For example, let's take this. I can go ahead and copy that here and then just replace x with y plus 1 half in the second equation right here. And you get y times y plus 1 half equals 1 half. That's going to give us y squared plus 1 half of y equals 1 half. You know, mul multiply everything by 2. And then you're going to get this. And then use the quadratic formula, negative b plus minus, so on and so forth. But here's one thing to be careful about. We're looking for x values, but x minus y and y minus x are not the same thing. Anyways, hopefully you get the idea. You're going to be able to solve this from here. Now, I want to go ahead and show you a third possibility, which I just quickly thought about. And then uh, we can kind of finish up with this. Okay. Now, for my third method, I'm not exactly sure if this is going to work, but I could probably just do the following. I can just write this as this, right? And then I can try to complete the square. What am I missing, right? Well, I probably, I have a squared plus b squared, so I'm missing the 2ab, right? What is 2ab? So a is x, b is x over x plus 1. So basically what I need is 2ab. So we can go ahead and try to add and subtract it. If you add 2ab, that's going to be 2x squared over x plus 1. And then we have to subtract it. So I was thinking maybe this is going to give us something nice like this, but unfortunately I don't have that inside the parentheses, so I don't think this method is going to lead anywhere. But uh, well, at least I just, I tried, right? Okay, hopefully give me some credit for the effort. And this is the graph. So this is an interesting rational function, which kind of looks like a parabola, but it's not symmetrical, obviously. It's kind of distorted parabola. And there are two intersection points for x equals 1 and x equals negative 1 half. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.